Every time the engine starts, hundreds of passengers are relying on the fact that each person responsible for flying or maintaining or building the plane is doing their job to the highest possible standard. And with the miles of cable and thousands of electrical connectors in the craft, it's no exaggeration that these passengers are depending on you. The electrical connectors you assemble may be used to control everything from navigation and engine systems to communications and the galley. In the next few minutes, we're going to look at what may seem at first glance to be just a minor detail, the proper insertion and removal of connector contacts. But if you think of cable and connectors as the nervous system of the entire plane, you can more fully appreciate the importance of your job and getting it done right to the last detail. A necessary understanding of proper insertion and removal includes an understanding of the connectors, contacts, tools, and technique. RMS connectors are available in several series designations with 10 possible shell sizes and three contact sizes. Contacts are female or male, and the tool must be matched to the contact. You'll need to use one of four insertion tools and one of three removal tools. RMS connectors are designed and manufactured to meet the specifications of MIL C26500. In this series, contacts are inserted from the rear, released from the front, and then removed from the rear. That's different from other connector series in which insertion, release, and removal are from the rear. Different tools are also required. As you'll soon see, this is not as complex as it may first appear. Let's start with the RMS connectors. Consider any one connector and realize that what you're holding is a precision component. It's the result of extremely close tolerance metal machining, elastomer molding, and precisely controlled assembly. As a precision engineered component, it must be handled carefully and properly for optimum end use performance. A complete connector requires two halves, a receptacle and plug that fit precisely together. To know the difference, the receptacle has a flange for mounting and the plug has a coupling ring to lock onto the receptacle. Inside the receptacle shell, you'll also find keyway slots while on the plug shell are raised projections called keys. Plug keys fit into the receptacle keyways and assure proper alignment for twist-on assembly. The mating end of either the receptacle or plug is considered the front. In other words, the front is the end with either the keyway or key. Both halves consist of an aluminum or stainless steel shell. Inside the shell are an elastomeric insert and grommet. Between the insert and grommet is a plastic disc that holds an array of metal contact retainers and provides electrical insulation between each contact. When the contact is inserted, the retainer fingers expand around the shoulder of the contact and then pinch behind the shoulder to hold the contact in place. During removal, the removal tool spreads the fingers and pushes the contact out of the retainer. On both ends of each grommet is a trace line to help you identify contact position. The first and last position are numbered. Starting with the first position, the numbers increase as you spiral outward following the trace line. Every tenth hole is encircled. To find the fourteenth position, for example, Simply find the fourth hole after the first circle. On the outside or inside of the connector package, you'll also find an alphanumeric code, for example, R071622B55SN. Instead of a single code, 
envision it as a series of separate units. For purposes of proper insertion and removal, you'll need to know that R0716 is the RMS series designation. 22 is the shell size. This means that the shell's mating diameter is 22 sixteenths. 55 normally refers to the number of contact holes in the insert and grommet. S means that the proper contact is a socket rather than a pin. This letter would be P if a pin contact were to be used. Before explaining how to use this code, first realize that you can have either a female contact, which would be a socket contact, or a male or pin contact. Both socket and pin contacts are available in three sizes, 20, 16, and 12. These numbers refer to the size of the mating contacts and not necessarily the size of the wire. The same size socket and pin must be used for the contacts to mate and make proper electrical contact inside the socket. The code is your guide for selecting the proper insertion and removal tools. R0716 is the connector reference used in the RMS catalog. On the available inserts page of the catalog, you can find shell size 22. Note that there are four inserts, each with a different contact reference number, 12, 19, 32, and 55. You're looking for 55 to correspond with the 55 on the package insert. Next to the 55 is another number, 20. That tells you what type of tool to use for insertion or removal. There are a total of seven tools, four for insertion and three for removal. Red tools are size 20, blue are size 16, and yellow size 12. Insertion tools are slotted to carry the contact and wire. Removal tools have a plunger with spring-loaded return. There are two red type 20 insertion tools due to an evolution in design. The older design is for wire over 60 thousandths of an inch and fits over the insulation cup. The newer tool fits inside the insulation cup and makes insertion of smaller wires easier and with less stress on the grommet. You now know that to insert contacts into this specific connector, you want a size 20 or red insertion tool. And that brings us to technique. It's the same for pin or socket contacts and receptacles or plugs. First, inspect the tool for damage or wear prior to each use. Always protect the tool from damage. The tip is precisely engineered to prevent damage to the connector, so avoid dropping or bending it, and keep it stored in the package provided until ready to use. Lay the wire into the slot down the length of the insertion tool. The crimp barrel of the contact mounts onto the tool's tip. The contact is inserted into the back of the connector. That's the side without the keyway or key, the side opposite the mating end. Find the proper hole by counting along the trace line. Keeping the tool and contact perpendicular to the grommet, smoothly push the contact straight into the center of the hole. Push until the contact is firmly seated. You'll probably hear a click that signals the opening and closing of the retainer fingers. Give the wire a light tug to confirm retention. If you have a force gauge, recommended force for size 20 is 15 pounds, size 16, 20 pounds, and size 12, 25 pounds. As an additional visual check after you've finished inserting all pin contacts, all pins should be the same height at the front of the connector. As a visual check for socket contacts, Every contact should be almost flush with the front surface of the insert. To remove a contact from this specific connector, use the red size 20 removal tool. You will remove the contact by entering the insert from the front or mating end of the connector. Hold the tool so that your thumb rests on the plunger ring. Get the feel of it by advancing the plunger a few times. 
a spring will return the plunger to the original position, but use your thumb to ease the return and minimize wear on the tool. Keeping the tool perpendicular to the insert, center the tip of the removal tool over the tip of the contact. Insert the tool until you can push no further with reasonable force, and while holding the connector and tool in place, push the plunger ring toward the connector. With a little practice, you can do this in one smooth, continuous motion. The retainer is high-quality beryllium copper designed to withstand up to 10 insertion removal cycles. The contact will extend out from the back of the connector and can be easily removed. There you have it. Connectors, contacts, tools, and technique. If you have any questions about contact insertion and removal, please ask your supervisor. Knowing all the answers is the best way to do an important job the right way.